Our psalm today is going to come from Psalm number 90. And we'll be reading Psalm 90 this morning. A prayer of Moses, the man of God, is how it begins. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you were God. You turn us back to dust. You say, turn back, mortals. For a thousand years in your sight is like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and is withered. For we are consumed by your anger. By your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are, are 70 years, perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble, and they are soon gone. We fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and prosper the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our lives, we know a lot about countdowns and about counting off days. Uh, if you watch this video online, if you, before the, the service starts, a lot of times there'll be a countdown from YouTube or Facebook, counting down the moments until the service or the video starts. Uh, that's an exciting thing to, 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 when you're anticipating something, to see a countdown going. I always think of the um, growing up watching the space shuttle take off. I always think of the, the countdown you'd see before a space shuttle or one of the rockets would launch into space. You use 10, 9, 8, and the more you count, the more the anticipation builds, the more, the more it builds to get ready to launch. I, I think that's been one of the, the frustrating things about the coronavirus is we don't have a, um, a countdown, do we? We don't have a definitive end to when this whole thing will go back to normal, whatever normal looks like. So we kind of feel like we're struggling because we don't know what to look forward to. That's, I think the thing about a countdown is it gives you something to look forward to. I, I don't know if you're like me, you may have noticed this year, out of the blue, we started getting Christmas catalogs. If you're my age or a little bit older, you're going to remember the old Sears wish book. Boy, what a, what, a, what, a, what a joy it was to get that Sears wish book, to, to look through all the pages of the catalog and, and mark what you wanted. Boy, those are those the days when you, could, when you could break that bad boy out and enjoy that. But it gave you something to look forward to. You knew, oh, the wish book's here. That means Christmas is coming. And so you might have the countdown to Christmas. Many of you teachers have your countdown to summer break right now, don't you? I have a friend of mine who uh, is, is a, not much older than me, but he has an app on his, watch, on his phone rather that uh, is a countdown to his retirement. We're used to counting down, aren't we? We count down the days when you were a kid to summer vacation, or you count down the days till Christmas gets here. The old saying, it's slow as Christmas because it seems like the, 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 it moves so slow when you're anticipating it. Uh, I've been doing some marriage counseling with some, some, some of our, our members here and the countdown to the wedding is on. And you know, every day you get closer, you're supposed to mark this off now and this off now until you finally get to the point that the wedding's here. We're used to countdowns. We're used to countdowns. It's a, it's a constant thing. Countdown to your, how many years till I'm old enough to drive? How many years till I'm old enough to graduate from high school? How many, how many days till college starts? How many days till I graduate from college? How, how many days until I can get that job? How many days till the baby's born? How many days until I retire? How many days till the house is paid off? We all, we all are familiar with this concept of countdowns. Counting the days, counting the days. This is an interesting psalm 
that we read from. And the first thing I read to you this morning was not actually a verse of the psalm. Many of the psalms will have descriptions at the beginning of the psalm that aren't really part of it. This psalm had to it the description it had was this. It said, A prayer of Moses, the man of God. I don't, I don't know if you're like me, maybe you aren't, but I don't associate Moses with the Psalms. I tend to associate David with the Psalms. I think of David a lot when it comes to the Psalms. But Moses, I don't, the Psalms aren't the book of the Bible. It isn't the literature that I associate most with Moses. I, I tend to think of Moses with the, with the first five books of the Bible, which are often called the books of Moses. So I tend to, when I think about Moses, my example of Moses tends to be the lawgiver. Moses going up on Mount Sinai and receiving the law. That's kind of where my mind drifts to with Moses. But it's interesting. The book of Psalms, as we've talked about, the, the Psalms are the, um, the hymnal of Israel. These, this was the collection of hymns that they would sing. They would sing the Psalms as they went about their life. They would sing the Psalms in worship. They would sing the Psalms as they went to the temple. So Psalm 121, one of my favorite Psalms. I lift my eyes to the hills, from whence does my help come? My help comes from the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes to the hills. For the Jewish people, when they lift up to the hills, they were looking to the temple mount. So I lift my eyes to the temple where the glory of, the God, where the glory of God resides. From thence does my help come. My help comes from the name of the Lord. So that was a Psalm of praise and anticipation for God's salvation and God's life in the midst of in the midst of, um, uh, of life in general. That was a psalm looking to God and to his favor and to his life. That's what the psalms were. So we so associate them with David because we see David so often in the scriptures leading worship. We think of how David, David loved to worship. He loved to lead others in worship. David wanted to build a temple. We see that as a constant part of David's life and what we associate with David. But if you look at Moses... You know what you see? Moses also led worship a lot, didn't he? Moses was the giver of the law. And so much of the law had to do with worship. Go back and look at Leviticus. And you're going to see a lot of verses there about how the crops are planted and how all this stuff works out. Sure. But if you look at Leviticus, you're going to see a whole lot of verses there and a whole lot of passages there that are about telling the people how to worship. So if you study the life of Moses, you're going to see that Moses actually led the people in worship and was part of the formation of worship for the Jewish people, probably more so than anyone in the Old Testament. We don't always associate Moses with worship. But yet when we look at Moses, we see that worship was a constant part of what he did. So for me, it's interesting when I read this psalm. Psalms to me have a, a verse or passage that are the heart of what they are. And for me, when I read Psalm 90, let me tell you the verse I think that's the very heart of this psalm. That's verse 12. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. You see in the psalm uh, an understanding of how brief human life is. You see references to a thousand years or like yesterday and how our lives are filled with this and then they're gone. So remember, Moses wrote this. Moses wrote this. And something that you see in Moses' life is that Moses knew the concept of waiting. Moses waited in the desert for those many years after he left Egypt. Moses went and led the people out of slavery. They began the exodus. They didn't take the promised land. And they wandered and they waited for 40 years 
in the wilderness. Moses had counted a lot of days. And Moses had waited for a long time. Something else that Moses experienced and that Moses knew was the concept of losing those he loved. If you remember in, 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 in Numbers, when the people fail to enter into the promised land and God pronounces judgment and God tells the Israelites that that generation that left Egypt, that generation, they would not enter into the promised land, but it would be their children. So all that generation that left Egypt, all that generation, they died in the wilderness. And you know who these people were who died in the wilderness? They were Moses' friends. They were his judges. They were his counsel. They were his priest. They led with Moses. Moses lost every one of his friends. He lost everyone that, that he was close to, even his brother and sister. They all died in the wilderness where Moses himself died. So Moses, throughout his life, understood the reality of waiting. He knew what it meant to wait. He knew what it was to mark the, mark the days. But he also knew what it was like to suffer loss, to suffer pain, to understand the brevity of life. So thus, here again what Moses said. I'm going to start with verse 9. For our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we're strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble and soon they're gone and we'll fly away. By the way, that's the verse that I'll fly away comes from. Think about this. These lives pass away. Under your wrath, they've been wandering in the desert for all these years. Who considers the power of your anger? They've seen the judgment. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. You can tell Moses has been pondering the judgment that people faced. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Teach us to number our days. Teach us to reflect on these things. Teach us to understand these things. I, I think there's two reasons to me why counting our days, by numbering our days is an important thing. First, it teaches us to reserve our passions, if you will, because on one hand, you see, well, to number our days. We have many days to live. We have many days to serve. We have many days to be faithful. There's a, a lot of things to focus on. I was thinking a lot. You may, you may have seen the old, uh, the old, there's a meme I've seen on Facebook where it said, um, if you could go back and tell your younger self one thing, what would you do back and tell them? And I think a lot about that. And if I could go back and tell 25-year-old Andy, a 30-year-old Andy or 35-year-old Andy something, I would tell him, to, I would go back and tell him, hey, just, just chill out. <laughs> just calm down. Life is short. Don't, don't make everything a big deal. Understand what's really worthy of your passions. Understand what's really worthy of your energy. Understand what really matters. I spent so much time when I was younger focusing my time and my energy on things that, frankly, weren't really that important. I spent a lot, spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on things that I look back now and thought, golly, why did I care so much about that? Why was that so important when it didn't help my family? It didn't even help my church. It was just mindless energy that I wasted. 
When I could have been using my passion, using my energy for something that matters. Y'all, there are things to be passionate about. I'm not calling for dispassion. I'm not calling for a milk toast life. I'm calling for a life full of passion because life is short. Life is fleeting. Life does not last forever. So there are things in our life that we should be passionate about. But choose the right things. I think about something Dr. Bryant used to always say in seminary. He'd always say, there are three crosses at Calvary, but only one was worth dying on. He said, there needs to be some crosses you're willing to die on. Some things, as a pastor, you're willing to get moved over. But the cola toilet paper is not one of them. Don't spend so much energy on things that don't matter that you don't have energy for the things that do matter. Teach us to count our days that we may have a wise heart. Don't waste your passion on things that really aren't that important. Don't waste your passion on things that aren't kingdom-based. Live with passion. Live with purpose. Live with energy. But live for the things that really and truly matter. I, I would go back if I could do it over again and spend more time with the kids when they were younger. Spend more time with Holly. Spend more time with my, my parents. Yeah. Spend my passion on those things. Spend more time reading Scripture. Teach me to count my days, O Lord, that I may gain a wise heart. Not everything's the end of the world. Not everything's as important as we make it out to be. Teach me to number my days so that I can use my passion wisely. But secondarily, when we number our days, I think what we learn then is we learn to see our, our life in the span of eternity. I, I think sometimes we spend so much energy. This is, this is kind of like passion, but not really. I think, I think we, the things that we worry about, the things that we're anxious about, the things that we're fretting about. Let me ask you a question. How important will that thing be tomorrow? Or the next day? Probably not very. It may, it may, if it's something really important, it may have some resonance or have some value or some importance tomorrow or the day after. It, it very well may. Let me ask you this. How much will that thing that you're worried about, worried about matter in the light of eternity? Matter in the light of God's kingdom? Matter in the thousands of, ye- thousands of years that, that are just a blink of an eye in eternity? When we understand the scope of eternity, when we understand the scope of God's dimension, we understand that our lives are fleeting and are not that all that long in the grand scheme of eternity. We understand that even the things that worry us now aren't a big deal in the light of eternity. Even coronavirus, as big as a deal as it is, as much as it's been a life-changing thing, as much as it's affected us, it's going to be fine soon. But even if, but think about how brief this has been in the light of eternity. It feels like forever. At least it does to me. It may like that to you. But even this in the light of eternity is not that long. When we number our days, we understand that this moment is precious, but this moment is fleeting. And the things that rob our joy the things that rob our peace, the things that rob our life, the things that mess with us, the things that destroy us, the things that that steal from us. These things in the light of eternity are not that big a deal. When we number our days, we understand our span and the scope of eternity. We understand that these things that keep us up at night. They really aren't that important. 
And when we understand that, we have that wise heart, then we understand what really matters. The fight you're having with your spouse about money, money's not a big deal, but your spouse is. The fight that you have about your parents, about something that you feel like so very important, isn't a big deal, but your relationship with your parents is. The fight that you have with your friend about something trivial, that you hadn't spoken to them in a, a month, isn't that important? But your friendship is. When we have a wise heart, we're able to discern what really matters. And we're able to live our life in light of that. So don't waste your passion on things that truly aren't that important. And understand that the things that we worry about in life are just fragments in the light of eternity. But live your life for what truly matters. Live your life for what truly matters. This past week was Veterans Day. Our veterans have lived their lives for what truly matters. And they have made tremendous sacrifices of their time, of their efforts, of their very lives, for which we're thankful for. In our 11 o'clock service, we're going to have our, one of our confirmands join the church and, and receive baptism. He's making this decision to live his life for something truly worthwhile. That truly matters. Each of us in our lives, we have things that truly matter. We need to count our days, number our days, understand the briefness of this moment, and live for what truly matters. In your life right now, friends, what is in your life that matters? What is in your life that is truly important? Are you using this time that God has given you for that? Are you being like I was when I was younger, living so passionately for stuff that doesn't matter that I missed what did matter? When we understand the span of our days and the light of eternity, we understand what really matters. Teach us to count our days, O oh Lord, that we may have a wise, discerning heart. May our loving and gracious God give us the wisdom to know how to best live each precious moment to the fullest. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your gift of life, your gift of discernment, your gift of grace. Father God, help us to live fully today and each day. Give us your grace to discern how we should live, what we should do, where our energy should go. Give us your grace that we may be faithful. Give us your wisdom. We love you. We ask this in Jesus' sweet and holy name. Amen.